Hello and welcome to Analysis with me, Jonathan Steele. In 2012, 1.2 million women in the UK alone suffered domestic-related abuse. On average, two women per week die at the hands of their intimate partner. Yet these are crimes that too often vanish beneath the radar, or they receive inadequate coverage, reported not as gender-based crimes, but just as ordinary crimes. Community-based responses, initiatives and projects working towards helping both victims and survivors continue to craft innovative ways to effectively combat violence against women. Tiana Simons has more on this issue. All over the world, women continue to experience the impact of violence. The UN estimates that within her lifetime, one in three women worldwide will become a victim. Throughout the world, we continue to see violence being used against women as a means of intimidation, control and dominance. This year has seen high-profile cases such as the rape of a student in Delhi caused countrywide uproar and point the spotlight on sexual violence in the country and throughout the world. In response to the ongoing problem, in 2008, the United Nations launched a campaign, Unite to End Violence Against Women, which aims to raise awareness worldwide through calling on governments, the media, and both men and women's organisations to address the problem effectively. Violence against women and girls directly affects individuals. It also harms our common humanity. That is why I launched my Unite to End Violence Against Women campaign in 2008. Partners around the world joined this drive to protect the basic human rights of women and girls to live free from violence. Sometimes he would stand me in front of a mirror and say, look at me and look at you. Who would think that someone like you are married to a guy like me? The most common form of violence a woman will experience is at the hands of her partner. In the United Kingdom alone, around two million women are victims of domestic violence every year. At least two women are murdered in the UK by their current or former partner every week. Aside from the emotional impact that this has, it also has an economic cost. It was estimated that domestic violence cost the UK economy £16 billion last year. We have a duty to speak With out. a growing number of men's organisations joining in the fight to end violence against women. Is this a turning point in society's approach? Or does more need to be done? Tayana Simons, Islam Channel. In the studio with me to discuss some of the key issues surrounding gender, gender violence are Baroness Manzila Pola Udin and Nadia Abu El Magd, Egypt, Egyptian journalist and war correspondent. Let me come to you first, Nadia. I mean, there has been a lot of incidents of, of oppression and even rape of women during these political protests in Egypt. I mean, is the situation getting a bit better now? Um. Okay, I mean, uh, also uh, related to what you uh, mentioned just before, I wanted to say that like two weeks ago, there was a poll uh, that said that uh, Egypt is uh, one of the worst places for women to uh, to be. And this is related to several uh, issues, I think. Part of it is sexual harassment. It's very widespread in, uh, in Egypt. I think Egypt might be like the worst or one of the worst for sexual harassment. This is before the revolution, and this is still... Uh, after, because it's a sh social problem, it's not all, only a political issue, but it was, unfortunately, it has been used, uh, harassing women uh, sexually and uh, abusing them, has been used as a tool since Mubarak regime, since 2005. Many uh, protests that women participated in were broke by using thugs associated with the police that they abuse women. So this is a, like a long uh, practice. Uh, and after uh, Tahrir Square, unfortunately, witnessed so many incidents of violating uh, women uh, protesters uh, since it, uh, the revolution in 2011. Were, were you surprised that Egypt was sort of top of the league or bottom of the league, if you like, in terms of violence against women, worse than other Arab countries? I'm not surprised. I'm sad about this, is, uh, this fact. It's, it's a fact. We can sort of denying facts uh, don't change them. It's a, as I said, it's a rooted uh, social problem. It's not only, so it's sort of like you have to solve the roots uh, of it. And uh, it has never been, uh, there was no uh, sincere attempt 
to uh, solve the problem as a, a social uh, issue. And then what, what made it worse is that it became sort of like an acceptable, uh, sort of like a political tool in the hand of uh, the regime of uh, Mubarak. And uh, those who are uh, against uh, the uh, 25th of Jan revolution used, uh, continue to use it as a tool against uh, women. Now, Egypt is witnessing a different kind of uh, violence against uh, women uh, protesters, which is uh, now that we have a new regime after after the, the coup. So uh, women who participate in protests against the coup are also being subjected to arrests, uh, abuse, um, indecent ways of uh, searching uh, them, humiliating them. And uh, the last thing was that uh, like uh, very young girls, some of them like minors, have been sentenced to 11 years in prison just for holding balloons with the Rabah sign. Rabah sign is the four finger sign that sort of uh, a symbol of the uh, massacre that happened for hundreds, if not thousands of. Why are they particularly targeting women? I mean, young men. People of different ages have also been carrying um, slogans and making similar signs. Yeah, they are targeting all, but like lately, there has been sort of protests by women. So uh, this happened like uh, ten, 10 days ago that these, like very young, they are students. Mm -hmm. So just before going to school or to, you know, they call it the seven in the morning, 7 a.m. Uh, uh, movement. So these girls were uh, arrested, were like uh, humiliated, were uh, like uh, had been in prison since last month, or since October actually, uh, for having this uh, protest. And they were sentenced to 11 years in, in prison. And as I told you, there are 21 uh, very young women. Seven of them are, uh, are minors. So mm. that's how things are in, in Egypt right now. Well, Baron Asuddin, I mean, you've got a lot of knowledge about uh, Bangladesh, for example. I mean, how bad is the situation for women in Bangladesh? Is it getting worse or better? First of all, if, if, if it's okay with you, I would quite like to make some comments uh, about what's happening in Please. Egypt. Um, since 2010, I've been raising this matter in Parliament about the use of um, rape or uh, torture of women or assault on women as a tool, uh, as a weapon of aggression, weapon of war. And of course, our government around the world, around the world. I yes. mean, this is this is not at all surprising for me to hear that Egypt is now become so unsafe for women. Wherever there are conflict and war, um, the the perpetrators will always use the tool of rape and torture of women as one of the weapons and up until very recently we've not had international recognition and I have raised time and again uh, about the issue of uh, women's safety in, in Egypt um, and uh, I think what one of the things very important and I'm really saddened to hear the experience that uh, Nadia is um, expressing but that is that does not come as any surprise to me I mean I grew up in Bangladesh during the war between Pakistan and Bangladesh and women 300,000 women estimated were raped and killed and tortured and for them justice has never been seen so I think that we have moved in modern warfare we've moved international community has moved to recognize this as a matter of great concern and not least because Angela Jolie is now leading this campaign and the baton, but it really doesn't matter who leads it. It nevertheless needs to be recognised. But what can be done? I mean, when you say you've raised it in yeah. Parliament, what are you asking well, for? Well, the, the, some of the issues that have been raised is, one, to recognise that rape is being used by perpetrators as a weapon of war, as a tool to oppress uh, a nation, oppress, uh, you know, and suppress uh, a community. And then second, to mark those individuals so that we have to have them reported. We have to recognize who are the perpetrators and uh, refer them to International uh, Criminal Court, uh, make sure that the, the national um, justice system deals with them as perpetrators. Of course, in a conflict situation, that's not possible. So so we have to make sure that we encourage women to keep records to ensure that their, their narrative is recorded so that whenever the opportunity arises that justice can be seen to be done and justice can be done. Well, I mean, we've been talking about sort of political violence and the use of rape and other forms of sexual oppression 
politically, but what about domestic violence? I mean, is that really as bad in Egypt as in some other Arab countries like the Gulf monarchies, for example? Uh, I, I don't have statistics exactly to say who is uh, worse than, than whom, but I think it's sort of, uh, it's also an, uh, an issue. But uh, it's sort of one of these issues that's also like not uh, very uh, much sort of like exposed or like uh, uh, people talk uh, talk about. People like tend to sort of like try to deny this. Sort of in a similar way that like sexual harassment and stuff. You know, like this is sort of like our internal affairs or like our we don't we, we're not supposed to sort of like tell the the world about like our uh, dirty laundry. Uh, if you would, but it's uh, it's it's an issue. But I think it's now more than ever is getting lost also because of all of what's happening in uh, in Egypt. You know, like I think like the the political uh, issues are sort of like everybody is interested in, or all of the attention is going to for the political issues uh, rather than you know like maybe what could be like social uh, issues and uh, stuff. My, my understanding in sort of in a generic context of violence is that um, in any countries, if um, uh, violence against women were not acceptable as you know uh, a form an act of aggression, then it wouldn't occur in conflict. So you know there's a natural process. I mean, generally in society, in all the countries, it doesn't really matter. In America, you know, it says that um, one every you know, um, one every out of every three women have experienced violence, and the uh, a woman will not seek any services or support, uh, up up to sort of having 35 different incidents, and even then, you know, many die. So these kind of statistics uh, are pervasive in our society, in male-dominated societies that we live in, and that is, is doesn't matter whether it's in Egypt or Bangladesh or Britain or America. That's a real issue, and that's why we're still having being to remind people by remembering a week of, uh, you know, elimination of violence against women or whatever. It's only a day. Yeah, yeah, ex yeah, yeah, maybe it One should day. be a week. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> a um, Freudian slip. But yeah, I think we should remember that every day because uh, I think that um, inherently it's about the oppression of women and that is in all culture. Uh, and I think that as soon as we realize that it's not a privy to one set of values, then we can, you know, sort of make sure that there are justice and that the, you know, people will take but it do, seriously. Do, do you think the current legal system in Britain deters women from reporting domestic abuse? I mean, you've said it's kept under wraps, it's private sort of thing, mm. it's considered private. Do you think it's getting better in Britain? Oh, I, I mean, I think it's much more better in Britain than, and I know that there are some discrep discrepancies in different communities, but um, one of the reasons why women will not be reporting it or where, where women are able to hide it is because the national, um, you know, um, legislative framework does not exist. So there isn't a reporting mechanism. The police aren't aware or police don't care. And then the legal system aren't giving, uh, you know, women receiving the complaint and dealing with them. So uh, in, in dealing with violence against women, whatever the context, whether it's war or generally in a domestic situation, so-called domestic situation, I really have a lot of objection to calling it domestic violence because it's not about domestic violence, it's about violence per se. So if you have the legal context, if you have the judiciary, the police, and then the uh, NGO sector all working together, the response to that one particular incident will be obviously be, uh, you know, outweigh, uh, well, it, it will be more um, constructive for that person who is experiencing violence. It's not going to take mm -hmm. a, eradicate the pain or the suffering, the humiliation, but it will at least deal with uh, the act itself. Well, we'll have to come back to that in the second half of the programme. We've run out of time and we've been talking internationally in the first half. In the second half, we'll be talking about the issues facing Muslim women in the UK. So stay with us.